Here we are with Solomia Book, who is my Ukrainian teacher, but not only that, she is associate professor of general linguistics at the Ivan Franco University here in Lviv. And of course, we talk about a lot of subjects in our Ukrainian lessons, and one subject that came up and that we're going to try to talk about, even in Ukrainian, but we're going to start in English, and that is the subject of Solomia's dissertation for her PhD, which is frequency. And she discovered and she showed me her work and there's some very interesting things that come out. First of all, that the frequency of words declines very quickly. Right. So the most frequent words might have several thousand, like the top ten might have several mm -hmm. thousand uh, appearances in any given text. And the, even within the top three thousand, the last mm, a few hundred may only have ten appearances. So there's a very dramatic drop, right. decline, decrease in frequency. That was the first conclusion you had. And the other one was that it, it happens no matter what the genre is. In mm -hmm. other words, it can be everyday speech, it can be a newspaper type language, it can be scientific language. The, the, the decline or the decrease in the frequency is the same. Right. And it's the same for all languages. Uh, it seems so. The core vocabulary is uh, very um, similar. Mm -hmm. uh, the first, um, let's say, 100 or even 500 uh, words uh, are uh, 100 or 500 most frequently used words uh, are universal uh -huh. for all uh, languages and uh, creating kind of core vocabulary. Uh, and of course, uh, the most frequently uh, words are uh, conjunctions, prepositions, mm -hmm. uh, particles, um, and then um, verbs, uh, nouns, uh, adjectives, and adverbs. So, what I took out of that, because my interest, I'm not a scientist, I'm not a, a linguist, but how does this apply to language learning? So, I googled to see what people are saying about word lists, and no one seems to have done the work that you and your colleagues have done where they look at five different genres, type styles, okay, themes, subject areas. So I thought that was very interesting. And the other thing that I got out of it was that, as with our mini stories at Link, you can attempt to write material, and I think this is the purpose of these lists, to help people who are writing textbooks. So you can write textbooks based on the very high frequency words, but once you get past the sort of very early list, the, the frequency drops so quickly that, and, and we've tried at Link to create intermediate level text, but it becomes difficult because in fact the frequency declines so quickly that maybe people are better off to look at particular areas of interest to them, for, you know, daily conversations, uh, sports, music, and then to use authentic material rather than to attempt to deliberately write textbooks based on these, even though relatively high frequency, still not very high frequency words. That was my sort of preliminary conclusion. Am I wrong? Uh, You're allowed to disagree. You're... <laughs> <laughs> uh, of course you are right. And um, um, some people could think uh, uh, to be able to speak any language, you have just to um, uh, learn by heart these frequently used uh, uh, words from the lists. But actually, uh, we know um, the best uh, thing to memorize, to remember the words, uh, is the context. Ideally, is the interesting con uh, context. So, that's why um, the uh, practical application of these frequency um, lists um, are to give the material uh, for the potential authors of the textbooks uh, to use them uh, in their textbooks. And uh, of course, if uh, they are creating the stories, uh, by the way, you have really good stories in your link. Thank you. Um, uh, they will uh, use some other uh, unique, low uh, frequently used uh, words. So, to sort of to conclude this uh, not very scientific discussion here, <laughs> uh, I think her work is very interesting. The frequency, the, the the rapid decline of frequency, which I hadn't realized. The fact that it's common to different themes in the language, and it's common to all languages based on other research. And, of course, the fact that we should uh, 
not try to learn from these lists. And uh, people, authors of textbooks can try to use the very high frequency words for beginners. And thereafter, we kind of, we sort of have to fend for ourselves, but we're best to try to focus on specific areas of interest so uh -huh. that at least there we will be deliberately creating more frequency Absolutely. for ourselves. Absolutely. Okay. And we're gonna, I'm gonna try to cover this in Ukrainian and it's gonna be very, very difficult. Okay. And uh, by yes. the way, how did you use the uh, idea of frequency uh, in your link uh, system? Okay, well, really, Just well, short, short briefly, so one of the things we, we do is we indicate the frequency of a uh -huh. word. So if a person comes across a word, then they may be more interested in learning it if they find out that it's a high frequency word. I don't know if learners use that. And the other thing we did is we wrote our mini stories and based it around the highest frequency verbs. Because my feeling was that I need the verbs in order to speak and the mini stories are there to get me to speak earlier. And they have been effective. So I found myself speaking earlier in Persian or Arabic or Greek uh -huh. than I did in say Czech or Ukrainian, even though because I had studied to say Russian, they should have been easier because they're Slavic languages. So to that extent we used it. But now, having seen your material, I'm going to look at other ways we can use it. It could be interesting. Absolutely. Okay. Bye for now. Whoops. Bye. Bye.